everybody. So, Drew, you mentioned it. something interesting right there. You 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 made a comment that LeBron still is the best player in the NBA. Is that what you Amen. believe? I firmly do believe that. Why? Why? What am I supposed to say that really is going Truth. to deter me from from believing that LeBron has the highest effective field goal percentage outside of all big men? Name it. He has a higher fi- effective field goal. Is that percentage. higher than Giannis too? Or Giannis is a big man? Yes, higher than Giannis, higher than KD, higher than Zach Levine. Zach Levine's actually second among those guys where he's shooting fifty eight. LeBron's shooting fifty nine. And shout out to Levine. You know he's my hurt my too. opinion. And that's tragic. And I'm praying that he makes a speedy recovery. No, no, back. he's been hurt for 15 games, bro. Levine's been out that long. No, I he thought he had been COVID. He's, he's been, been hurt. Out. He hasn't been out. He's oh, been so hurt. he's just been playing hurt. Yeah, he's and been he's hurt. still this nasty. Yeah. Okay, he's God bless him. Hurt. That being said, we talk about LeBron and him and his effectiveness on the field. Now, I had to crunch some numbers because nobody's going to calculate the numbers while he's at the center position because against Memphis, we had Dwight Howard play center for us. And firmly, now that I I can understand hindsight and hindsight gives me the most crystal clear vision, I believe that he should have played center that game too because why not? I'm looking at these numbers. And in these five games that LeBron has played the center position for us, He has a field goal percentage of 53.3%. He is shooting 38% from three. He has 8.8 rebounds a game, six and a half assists, and averaging 32.8 points per game. Right now, LeBron is averaging 28.7 points per game. That is the second highest in the NBA. He has a PER of 24.34. That is fourth highest in the NBA. And now we're asking a 37-year-old man in year 19 to not just transition to the center position, but two years ago, we had him transition to the point guard position. What did he do? He averaged 10 assists a game, led the league in assists. Now we're here in 2022. And now we're asking LeBron to play the center position for us. And he is playing it at 35% of the time. LeBron is our center. And LeBron right now, in terms of points per post-up, he's averaging 1.18% uh, 1.18 points Per post up in point in possessions as the role man, he's averaging 1.48 points per per roll. Mm. LeBron is one of the most versatile offensive players. And it, it really <laughs> upsets me in the sense where he never gets mentioned in, in best scorers. But name a more versatile ball player on offense than LeBron James. Versatile offensive player. I'm not talking about scoring. I'm talking about versatility on the offensive side of the ball. He can he can play make as great as any player in NBA history. People like to criticize his free throw percentage. His free throw percentage is up to 78% this year. Last year, he shot six uh, just under, I think it was 68 to 69% from the free throw line. Regardless of what you want to say on 78%, that is a huge stride, especially in year 19 for him to increase that that number as drastically as he has as he has. The Lakers, as River has mentioned, time in, time out, are not good, right? Talent-wise, roster-wise, we're not that good. We've been playing no one. But regardless of that fact, LeBron has still willed us on his back. He mentioned earlier, and, and as he was given praise, LeBron is the oldest player in NBA history to have 25 points per game in 10 straight games at that age. He surpassed Rivers' go Michael Jordan, as the oldest player, who did it at 34 years old. This is three years removed from that. And LeBron's not only doing that at, at an efficient level, he is doing it at a different position than what he has in his entire career. Prior to this year, he had only played the center position 1% of the time in his entire career. So the fact that he's able to do this at this point in time, you still look at Kevin Durant, how efficient he is offensively. Does he provide you the defense that LeBron does? Does he supply you with the versatility that LeBron does? Does he provide you with the playmaking that LeBron does? You look at Giannis. Giannis is, 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 it has a great case too, because he has the points, he has the defense, but does he, does he supply you with that defense, with the, with the playmaking that, that LeBron does? Does he supply you with that versatility of being able to play the one through five in year 19 at age 37, we're still witnessing the greatest to ever do it. And we have to sit back and marvel at it. Are you saying we're witnessing the greatest to ever do it still be the best in the game? Correct. I want you to say that. (laughs) That's basically, that is exactly what I said. I want you to say it now. I said it right now. 
in year 19, at the age 37, we're witnessing the greatest player of all time still be the best player in the NBA and in the world. LeBron is not the best player in the league right now. Who's better? And, and, and you know, this question is so – it's it can go so many ways. You know, I think Kevin Durant, you know, being as how deadly he's been. You know, you're talking about LeBron, but Kevin Durant in these last eight, nine games has been just as amazing. You look at Giannis, his two-way play, him being one of the best two-way players in the league, his dominance on offense and defense, it's incredible. You know, I'm looking at those three guys. You look at you look at the Joker this year. You know, this, the, the best player in the league is such a like this year. I feel like it can go in multiple different directions, but I'm I'm gonna just stick with these three guys because obviously Steph had his stinkers, so I can't throw him in right now. So I'm gonna stick with Kevin Durant versus Giannis versus LeBron James. I'm gonna stick with these three guys right here. We're gonna talk about these three guys. Kevin Durant has consistently been the most dominant scorer in the league this year. Can, we, we can agree on that. He's been that guy. They've been. I don't know about that. LeBron has the most 30 point games this season over every other player in the NBA. I'm talking about from an efficiency standpoint. Fair enough. You got it there. Even from, though from LeBron's been very efficient, but fair. I mean, from, that's from a from good point. Two pointer from the three pointer. Like you talk about 78%. Kevin Durant has never been 78% in his life. Like, fair enough. In his life. You know, I'm looking at the fact that he's been a number two or a number one seed all season. He's been constantly winning no matter what his number two guy is doing, whether he's struggling, whether he's doing his thing, whether who's playing. Kevin Durant just won with a bunch of rookies like two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. So Kevin Durant has been and I'm looking at Giannis and I'm looking at his department. That team has been hit with COVID. That team, the guys have been in out of lineup, but he's still been dominant on defense, offense. And of course, LeBron, you're looking at LeBron. He's been. You know, offensively, we this is probably one of the best LeBron we've ever seen. He's been elite from the three point line, but it's just hard. Like not even on no hate, and it's just hard for me to say LeBron is because I feel like all three of them have performed at around the same level. But Katie and Giannis have just been winning. You know, and winning really puts you over the top. We know this winning changes everything. Winning puts you in that category, and right now, Kevin Durant and Giannis have been winning. We had a sudden cut off there, and unfortunately, that's one of the reasons why we hate recording through Zoom, because technology is unpredictable, and because of that, uh, we I lost basically most of Riv's monologue, because Zoom kicked me out uh, for some reason, but what Riv was basically saying is that you think what's separating LeBron and the other players from being the best in the world are, are that the other players have similar numbers, but they're also winning as well. So back to the question, you don't believe LeBron is the best player in the world, Riv? No, I, I feel like Kevin Durant is the best player in the league right now. I've been saying that since the beginning of the season. I'm going to stand on that. I think he's played at that same level since he started, and his team has continuously been winning. And I think Giannis is the second best player in the NBA right now. But LeBron is right there at three. I feel like they've all been at that similar level. It's just, you know, what's separating them, like I said, is winning. You know, Giannis and Kevin Durant – respectfully are at the top of their conferences number two seed and number three seed I believe for the Bucks or four three or four but they've been consistently winning you know LeBron and the Lakers you know LeBron went on a stretch where he was he had 30 point games and they didn't win none of them you know and granted they just picked it back up but still he's had these moments where he's looked elite but they haven't gotten wins you know with Giannis and Kevin Durant they've been consistently winning so that's what puts them over the top for me do you think LeBron's the best JC uh, as I watch more games, uh, I, I previously had LeBron as anywhere from the four to five, but on this tear that he's been on, I mean, I mean, it, it's eye opening. I don't think he's better than Kevin Durant because a lot of Lakers fans and everybody that like to talk about the, the situation that LeBron's in. Well, Kevin Durant's been in a tough situation as well. His second best player in James Harden has been widely inconsistent all year. Uh, he's his whole team was out for COVID. Kevin Durant went three and one with rookies like David Duke, Dayron Sharp, Kessler Edwards. These are guys that if you're not really in tune with basketball, you don't know who they are. So mm. um, he's won games with them against Toronto, who's, who's we all picked, or at least three of us picked. Drew's on the he's on the verge of not calling them a playoff team. He has to see more. He's beating them fully healthy with intact. He's beating Philly fully healthy intact with those with those young guys. So he's he's done it. He's he's been the most consistent part of the Nets in their in their winning that they've been doing. Um, another a thing that kind of like 
like kind of kills the case. And I will agree with Drew because he has said this on multiple occasions is, you know, the Nets don't win against the big the big teams that they're supposed to play. So you Drew could rebuttal me with that. And I wouldn't really have anything to say. But you could just say the Lakers don't either. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I was going to say. The Lakers, the Lakers haven't either. And the Lakers actually did get beat by the Nets without Kevin Durant as well on Christmas Day. But I mean, with that being said, Kevin Durant has been the common denominator of success for the Brooklyn Nets, albeit with James Harden being out or him playing with a bunch of rookies. Or even when you saw when he was absent, I think the team went one and two. They got that one game in L.A. No, the two and two. They got the two wins in L.A. and then lost the next two without Kevin Durant. So uh, Kevin Durant for me is the number one in the MVP candidacy just because he's been consistent all year and he's won with what's been given with him. Now, Giannis, same reason. Giannis, uh, just last night he played against Kevin Durant and won without Drew Holiday, who was having a great year, borderline all-star, another guy. Uh, the Bucks have dealt with a lot of COVID uh, issues as well, Chris Middleton being in and out of the lineup as well. The Bucks haven't been the healthiest team. A lot of people forget that at the start of the season, the Milwaukee Bucks were 6-8 and eight at one point in the season and were basically in the plan. We all know that that wasn't going to last, but once Giannis got his team intact for those next couple of games, I think they have the best record when they when their big three plays. I believe they're anywhere from 16 and two to 15 and two with them. Giannis is dominant on both sides of the basketball, looking like a DPOY candidate. Probably won't win because Draymond Green's been that spectacular this year on defense, but still, nonetheless, Giannis is still one of the best defenders in the league. And then if you look at just his raw points per game and everything, Giannis is averaging about 27, 28 points per game, giving you 13 rebounds, giving you six assists, doing Giannis like things. And I just think. Just just off the fact that those two guys are winning and have won, I would put them over LeBron. But in no sense of the imagination am I saying that LeBron's not anywhere near those guys' level because if we're just strictly talking about as a player, he's every bit as good as Giannis and Kevin Durant. It's just he's been – he just hasn't really been winning. But just because of the winning aspect of it, I would put Kevin Durant one, Giannis two, and LeBron three in the world right now, in my opinion. Last week we kind of gave John slack for this, but – Nikola Jokic might be the best player in the world. He might he's, be the best. He's another one. I would, I just off a of respect factor, I'm just going to give it to LeBron. But that's an argument that, that, that was an argument that I was making with myself between Jokic and LeBron. I actually do think that's, that's, that's a pretty respectable d- debate. It's not disrespectful to compare them this year because Jokic has been phenomenal as well. I think it's just funny how the media, and people like to push LeBron in this in this conversation, but forget that the Joker is winning with less. For the role you know, players. <laughs> yeah, there is nobody playing for them. But yet he's he's doing like some things with that team. Granted, they're not they're they're probably breaking even at the, they're probably one up, like probably 19 or 18, I think, at this point. But he yeah. doesn't have Jamal Murray. Michael Porter Jr. went down. You know, he's missing like he's missing a lot of his guys, yeah. you know, and he's still not doing his thing. I mean, like, granted, LeBron's performances have been great, but we got to give, like, there's a lot of guys in this MVP race that really deserve some credit, you know, that they've, they've been doing some spectacular things with their team, you know. It's it's going to be tough this year because, w- like you said, with, with the Joker and LeBron, they have to win more, right? With KD and Giannis, they have to just continue to success, but what's going to happen to guys creeping in like Steph and B, DeMar, like those guys trying to creep into the race, like those guys are also winning too. So it's like this MVP race is really going to determine like does winning really matter or is it just about individual, like individual success and what they're doing? You got anything to say, Drew, about that? It's interesting how we are bringing in Jokic into the conversation. And I don't disagree. I think Jokic has been fantastic. Best player in the world. You 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 criticize you criticize my Lakers because we're not winning, but we're a higher seed than the Nuggets are right now. And I'm not disagreeing with your point that the Nuggets have no one right now because that's a hundred percent true. But now we're starting to see the Lakers team get healthy, get their guys back from COVID. We're finally seeing play the basketball that we can that we know that we came into the season that we could play, and we're doing this without our second best player in Anthony Davis. Once AD comes back. It'll be interesting to see what we decide to do with our lineup. Is LeBron going to stay at the five and allow Anthony Davis to stay at his his natural position at the four? He likes to play the power forward position. I've been very adamant in this position. I think that the Lakers need to have AD play the five if we want to be a championship caliber team. But given the fact that LeBron has shown this ver- 
versatility of being able to play the center position, would it be out of the realm of possibility to see LeBron run at the five and AD run at the four to allow to, to, to cater to Anthony Davis and his needs on the court? We're starting to see LeBron and Russell gain a connection too. And this is all based on our guys coming together, finally getting the team chemistry that we've needed, that we've lacked, given the fact that guys have just been constantly in and out of the lineup. And in terms of regarding the best player in the world, Jokic has a good case, and, and that's a very fair point. What, what he, he does is second to you see his numbers advanced analytic when he's on the court, when he's off court, they're one of the best teams in the league when, when he's on the court. When he's off the court, they're one of the worst teams in the league. But you take LeBron off the Lakers, it's a, it's a similar story. The Lakers are a, a lottery team without LeBron. It's that simple. So that whole case is kind of teeters for me because I know the value that LeBron holds and I know the value that Jokic holds. But the fact that LeBron's averaging more points, LeBron's averaging more assists, he still has – he doesn't have a higher PER than what Jokic has because Jokic has having one of those all-time great PER-type seasons – it's not. It's one of those that's not going to remain because that's just how the NBA works. Slowly but surely, it will start to go down. But that being said, I still take LeBron's versatility. I still take LeBron's athleticism. I still take his scoring. I have a question because it's it's just like what what makes you think that <laughs> that the that the Lakers have got it figured it out? Like a a a, a drug a, a drag out win against the Kings, a, a win against Minnesota, a five point win against Minnesota with no cat. I mean, like, a, a win against Portland and only Dame played. Then you lost to the Grizzlies. Then you beat the Rockets by Grizzlies nine points. Team. You beat the Rockets by nine points. Then before that, that handling. before we that, them before that, you lost to Brooklyn. You lost to the Spurs. You lost to Phoenix. You lost to Chicago. You lost to Minnesota. So it's like, what have you, like, what, like, this little run you have, it's cute. Line of, all right, I'll tell you this, and I'll answer your question very simply. Our lineups that we've dished out have been very interesting. You see with LeBron and, and Dwight Howard, they struggle when they're on the court together. The offensive rating is horrible. It, I have it right here. Give me one second. I'll pull it up for you. When LeBron and Dwight Howard are on the court, their, their offensive rating is 126.4, which is, is pretty good, but their defensive rating is 118.5. When it's just LeBron, their offensive rating is 118.1. Their defensive rating is 110.9, which is, is which is better in terms of defensive rating. So we see how the lineups change and, and how we played against the Grizzlies. We had Dwight Howard start that game. He had a plus a plus rating, as you mentioned before. That being said, in those minutes that he's played, that he played, it halts the way that our offense can work, that can work together. You bring in Stanley Johnson now. He allows a little bit more spacing. We need to, to start running this small ball lineup. And we've seen that we can have some success when we run this small ball lineup. This is the first time in LeBron's career that he's ever had to run a small ball lineup outside of the series against Houston where they had to, to cater to their small ball lineup. But that's even still, they had Anthony Davis running the five. So you have LeBron being the second, I think, I don't know, I'm off the top of my head. I couldn't tell you how tall Stanley is, but I know six, that he's a, he's a power forward. So LeBron's the tallest player on the Lakers court at 6'8". So the fact he's six, that LeBron nine. has had to... Oh, he's 6'9"? Six, six, nine? Nine? He's listed six, as 6'9 nine, nine. Nine now. Yeah. Oh. So, the, so the fact that we have LeBron learning this new system so rapidly... But still, it needed to take some time to get here. Frank Vogel has messed with the, with the lineups a lot. We're finally getting Malik Monk now into the starting lineup. We see that his capabilities, the whole issue of, of Buddy Heald wanting to come to our squad, right? That's the, the big name that we should have traded for instead of Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook hasn't been great efficiency-wise, but rebounding and playmaking, he's been fantastic for us. And in terms of shooting the ball, Malik Monk has shot the ball at a more efficient rate than, than Buddy Heald has this season, both three-point land and from the field. So that Malik Monk coming in and him giving us the spark that he has, has elevated us tremendously. And now we need THT to play as consistent as he's had these last couple of games. When he struggles, the Lakers as a whole struggle. But now we figured out the small ball lineup and we're having success. You heard I, that. I'm just, THT I'm just really makes the Lakers go. I'm just really interested this month. I'm really going to yeah. tune in this month because you got road yeah. games against. I'm not. You got you got you play tomorrow. At Memphis, uh, in, in L.A., you play Memphis. Not really acknowledging the Kings. You play Denver. Then you got Utah, not acknowledging Indiana, Orlando. Then you got Miami, Brooklyn, Philly, Charlotte, Atlanta, all on the road. So I'm really going to be curious to lock in on you guys. 
and see because these are much better games and these are more competitive teams. So let's see if this smoke because you now you play Embiid. Now you have to play Kevin Durant. Hopefully Bam out of Bayou is back. Now you have to play him. So let's see what this small ball lineup is looking like. Then you got the Joker. So I'm really I want to see LeBron at the five. Show me something. Play him at the five against the Joker. Wow. Let's see, let's see what happens. I really want to see it. Let's see if that works. Go ahead. I'm looking and forward then Embiid. to it. Play him at the play. He's 250, right? Go ahead, throw him against Embiid. Let's see if it happens. So I'm really interested to see what this looks like, honestly. 